Got it. Got it. No, we'll just say got it on the thing. Oh my god, why is it so tiny? Bam the trigger. The trigger. We're literally adding thumbs. All right. Um, who wants to become the speaker of the house today? You want to do it? Tristan doing? I forgot how to. Okay, you can do it. I will help you. It's okay. Put a pump together. Go. Put a pump. Teacher and Shaka. Oh, you, Tristan. No, I'm a teacher and Shaka. And tell them what they should do when they're in the Zoom. You remember? You left your tutor. Turn on your camera, listen to your tutor. Um, raise your hand before you talk to the tutor. If the tutor calls you, talk to her. And also, don't chat, right? Only when we ask you to do so, right? Good, very good. You are very good. All right. So, who want to do the? All right, let's see. Uh, all right, Baham, go ahead, tell them what they should do for the meditation. Keep your um, uh, neck straight and back straight, close your eyes, inhale and exhale, and do not follow your monkey behind. Mm, okay. Inhale and exhale to the nose, right? You count one. Inhale and exhale to the nose, you count two. Keep going. If you see your monkey mind, you go back to your inhale and exhale. That's good. Keep your neck straight, your back straight. If you lose um, track of your pounding, start from one. Good. All right. Who want to do the timer? Anyone? Yeah? Anyone want to be? Oh, yeah, Justin. Go ahead. Get your timer. Okay, when you're ready, let me know. Hang on. Okay, show me your timer. All right. Oh, wow. You use you, your laptop. Okay. All right. Count one, two, three. Unmute it. Count one, two, three. One, two, three. And press the button. Okay, did you count one, two, three? Is it moving or not moving? One, two, three. Good. Let us keep you. Okay. Sit still. No move. Thank you.
It's off. It's off. Yeah, that's good. Good. Good then, Carter and Emma. Thank you. Uh, what in him? We are. Uh, Hong. Hong. Thirty six. Um. Dylan. Good. Okay, we we'll keep calling a few more. Ariel. Ariel. Thirty. Aaron. Aaron. Thirty. You have the same exact number as Ariel. Aaron, where you? Where are you? I don't see you. Okay, come here. He's looking somewhere else. Good. Yeah. All right, we are. Uh, I'm going to show you the video of what happened. How come uh, a lot of people missing today? Mm. Okay. Uh, Olivia, can you uh, summarize at the end? Yeah. Okay, go. On. Here you, Here you will find the most amazing and interesting stories. So subscribe to our channel. Hope you enjoy this video. Cindy, from Canada, decided to feed the homeless man who lives near her workplace. She is a friendly woman and she saw that the man was going through some hard times, something Cindy couldn't stomach. To her it was an ordinary act of kindness, but for the homeless guy it was much more than that. When Cindy found out who this person was, she was in complete shock. She never expected that her ordinary act of kindness would go on to have so many consequences. Continue watching to know all about this amazing story. Cindy worked as a waitress in a restaurant and walked the same route to work every day. For a while, she always saw a homeless person sitting in the same spot near her work. No matter what the weather was like, he always sat in the same spot with a lonely look in his eyes. Cindy thought the man always looked very lonely. Still, the man himself didn't seem to mind. He was always in a good mood and smiling at everyone who passed by. In fact, he never asked for help or money. All he wanted was to chat. Cindy thought this was admirable, but also thought the man was keeping his real feelings to himself. The reason Cindy thought this was because she'd seen that not everyone was always nice to him. She had often seen people walking past him without even looking at him. She sometimes even noticed that an entire day would go by without a single person stopping to chat with the man. In fact, it sometimes even happened that people laughed at the man. Cindy also once had saw a group of boys spit into the man's cup. Something Cindy had a hard time seeing and understanding. One day Cindy decided enough was enough. The man was always kind to everyone, and it was time someone gave him something nice in return. She hated that the man was being treated like this. In her eyes, the man was not worth anything less than anyone else, and she decided that she wanted to encourage the man. Cindy herself worked as a waitress in one of Canada's fanciest restaurants. The restaurant had managed to get no fewer than two Michelin stars, and nothing but high quality is expected in the restaurant. Cindy was a waitress herself, but had the dream to one day start working in the kitchen. She was studying to become a chef, and with this part-time job she could pay for her education and gain experience at the same time. The food served in the restaurant, where Cindy works is certainly not cheap guests spend a few hundred dollars a night. This was sometimes difficult for Cindy to understand, because right around the corner, the homeless men slept every day. The difference between rich and poor was painfully visible. Cindy didn't necessarily like her job. She mainly did it so she could pay the bills, save for college, and gain experience in the culinary industry. Yet most of all she felt powerless. She didn't think it was fair that people were spending hundreds of dollars a night when people were starving a few feet away. She decided to take action. She just had to try and do this unseen, because if her boss found out about her plans, she could lose her job. Unfortunately, her boss, the chef of the restaurant, was present on the restaurant floor. She could hear his yelling to the kitchen staff from afar. Still, she went through with her plan. The plan was to take food from the restaurant and cook something delicious with it. She had to be careful, though. 
The ingredients at her work are very expensive, even the olives cost a lot of money. So she had to be very careful that nobody would find out. If her boss realized that she had stolen food, she would immediately lose her job. Cindy didn't feel comfortable stealing ingredients, but it also felt justified to her. She saw it as a Robin Hood situation in which she could contribute to a step in the right direction. Her intentions were good, but stealing is still bad, and she was only too aware of the risk she was taking here. Despite her nervousness, Cindy persevered with her plan. She heard her terrible boss yell at the kitchen staff and knew exactly where he was. This was the perfect time to sneak into the freezer. While she was secretly trying to get closer to the freezer, she heard her boss ranting at her colleagues. Succeeding would feel so good, purely because her boss was making everyone's life miserable in the workplace. Finally, Cindy managed to get into the freezer unseen. She was searching for food that wouldn't be missed and eventually managed to pack as many as 20 ingredients into her bag. This may sound like a lot, but Cindy knew exactly how much would get noticed and how much wouldn't. She'd pack just enough to make something tasty for the homeless person. Cindy couldn't believe her luck until she heard a loud knock on the freezer door while she was still inside. Cindy was sure. She had been caught and she would lose her job. Her heartbeat skyrocketed and a feeling of fear crept over her. The chef realized someone was in the freezer. Normally no one is allowed in there alone except himself. All the other kitchen staff always had to bring someone with them when they wanted to go into the cold room. The chef quickly realized that there was someone in the cold store without being asked. Cindy was in a complete panic. She had to get out of the cold room as quickly as possible, but she had nowhere to go. The chef was standing at the door and Cindy could already feel where this was going. Tears were in her eyes. Losing her job would mean that she no longer had any income and would not be able to pay for her culinary studies. In addition, she would acquire a bad reputation in the culinary world and not be able to find a new job quickly. Unable to move, the waitress lost all hope. The feeling of despair and panic crept over her as she realized she had to give up her passion, the culinary world. She crept back into the cold room to hide and leaned against the back wall. While waiting for the chef to catch her, something bizarre happened. The wall Cindy was leaning against was of poor quality. In recent years, that part of the wall had become damaged and weak. As she leaned against it, that section of the wall gave way and Cindy fell through the wall and ended up in the hallway of the restaurant. No one had seen her fall because it was in a sheltered area where mostly the waitresses walked. Cindy couldn't believe her luck. Cindy put her tray in front of the hole in the wall and managed to escape with all the ingredients she had stolen. She was just in time because she heard the chef walk into the freezer while Cindy had just covered her tracks. All she would be left with was a bruise, but that was worth it to her. She had never walked home so quickly after a day at work. The waitress was finally able to get to work on her plan. However, things turn out differently than expected. Only when she got home did Cindy dare to breathe out loud again. She now knew for sure that she was safe and that she could get to work cooking with the stolen ingredients. She went straight to work and spent more than two hours in the kitchen cooking a delicious meal for the man. And she succeeded. When she could finally carry out her plan and give her home-cooked meal to the homeless person, she was overjoyed. Not only had she provided him with a meal, but also with some money so that he could buy some more things with if he needed it. The man was so surprised that he was completely stunned. He told her that he had never experienced such kindness. Cindy knew she had made the right choice and took her plan one step further. Nothing could break the waitress's good mood. Not even her mean and stern boss. Cindy decided to offer the homeless person warm home-cooked meals for the rest of the week. The man thought the meals were delicious. Cindy and the man were both overjoyed until one day, her chef shows up at her door. Cindy was very shocked when she saw the chef standing at the door and knew immediately that she had been caught. She hesitated to open the door, but he had already seen her. The chef would never come to just visit, so Cindy opened the door of her house with trembling hands. Her boss was incredibly angry. He had discovered the tray in front of the broken wall and knew immediately that it belonged to her. When the chef had found the tray, he decided to look at the camera images. In these images he had seen that Cindy had secretly been hiding in the cold store. He also saw the bag with ingredients when he looked at the camera images. There was little time or space for Cindy to say anything. The chief yelled, you're fired, when the front door opened. Then Cindy was given a 15-minute lecture on why he was in charge and why she should obey him. In the end, Cindy caught only about half of the lecture because she stopped listening. She could only think of the dire consequences of her actions. 
While her boss was raging, Cindy saw her whole future pass her by. Without a job, she could never pay for culinary studies. In fact, she would never get a job again with a reference like that. She had never foreseen what would happen after her dismissal. The day after being fired, Cindy walked past her former workplace. She peeked through the window, and a feeling of grief overcame her. She felt so stupid and found it difficult to clear her mind. When she started to walk away, she saw the homeless person sitting in his usual spot. As always, he was waiting for someone to talk to him, so Cindy decided to have a chat. The homeless person asked Cindy why she looked so sad, and she explained the situation to him. That's horrible. They can't just fire such a culinary talent, can they? This is truly a great loss for the entire culinary world. I do not agree with this, and I'm going to put a stop to it was his reaction. The man angrily stormed into the unkind chef's restaurant. The restaurant was packed, and the chef rushed at the man when he saw him. Cindy had followed, and the chef tried to kick them both out of the restaurant. When the homeless person revealed who he really was, the roles were completely reversed. Leave my restaurant at once, you dirty old man. Your kind doesn't belong in a restaurant, the chef yelled at the homeless person. The chef never expected that this could be the dumbest move of his entire career. When he found out who the homeless person really was, he immediately regretted his words. When the chef was done shouting, the man laughed softly. You really don't remember who I am anymore, do you? The homeless person asked the chef. Then, he took off his dirty coat, and suddenly a neat suit appeared from under it. It seemed as if the man had undergone an entire transformation in 10 seconds. He didn't look like a person who lived on the corner of the street every day. He suddenly looked like an average man. The man saw Cindy look at him in amazement and decided to explain to her what was going on. The man, I am not homeless. I am a food critic and rate the quality of the menu and service. A few weeks ago I decided to eat here for another review, and this restaurant has become so much worse. The service was very good, but the food was way below par, and that is this tyrant's fault. So I decided to do something about it. Last week I bought most of the shares of this restaurant. That's why I am the new owner of this restaurant. Because my last visit was disappointing, I decided to keep an eye on things from a distance. It quickly became very clear to me that this restaurant isn't managed well. Then the man turned to the chef, your dishes are barely edible, that's how gross they are, you're fired. The man then turned to Cindy, Cindy, the food you've made for me over the past few days was innovative, deliciously flavored and the best I've eaten in years. Now that a position is open as a chef, I was wondering if you would be interested in the job? Cindy couldn't believe her eyes and ears. She could hardly comprehend what had just happened. Was it a dream? Or was this really happening to her? Before she could even process what was going on, she shouted out loud, yes, Cindy now manages the restaurant and keeps the kitchen running. She is finally doing what she loves most and enjoying every minute of her new job. As it turns out, if you are nice to others, something beautiful may come from it. Well that's all for today friends, what do you what think? Hola, Olivia. The woman named Cindy who was a, wait a waitress at a really fancy restaurant and there was a homeless person living outside of the restaurant and she felt really bad for him because um, all he wanted was to talk to people, but they like walked past him and the, some of them even like spit in his cup. So she decided to um, make him food. So she, um, she um, went into the kitchen at the at the fancy restaurant she worked at when the chef was yelling at her other like co-workers and um she took some ingredients from the freezer until she heard the chef coming and he knocked on the freezer and she was so scared because she knew that if she got caught then she would never be able to do her dream which was to become a chef and she couldn't and she wouldn't be able to afford um culinary school so when she and when she leaned on the wall it broke and then she was able to 
she fell out into the hallway and then she took the ingredients and went home and cooked a meal for the homeless man and gave it to him and he said that it was really good and she told him that she told him that she would give him that she would cook food for him every single day for the rest of the week um and then one day the her chef showed up at her house and she knew like what would happen because um he never like came over to her house for a visit and she gave her a 15 minute long lecture and yelled at her and said that you're fired um and then the next day she was walking past the restaurant where she worked and um the he said and the homeless man asked her um why she looked so sad and she told him what happened at her job and then they went into the restaurant and then um the chef tried to kick him out until um the homeless man took off his coat and he looked like normal like a normal person again and um he said that he was actually a food critic and before the food at that restaurant was really good but now it tastes bad because of that chef who was really like me um and then he fired that chef and opened up a, and there was a position opening up and he gave it to Cindy and yeah who was the owner the new owner the homeless man okay oh good that's good okay all right alan what did you learn from this story We yeah, uh, it's a lot of this sure, thing that sure, you're learning. If you're kind to someone, good thing will happen to you. Okay, that's good. That's good. All right, Maham. What else do we learn from this story? Treat others how you want to be treated. Yeah, that's good. Okay, Kathleen. What else we learn from this story? You should all. people because it will come back to you mm okay that's good kyle beside all those things what else we learn from this story be selfless and not selfish mm that's good all right let me ask you a question here uh david david <coughs> david you there not all right and mel and mel All right. Um the okay Cindy she um, she uh, did, did her action is good or bad? On pause. I I I came late. You came late. Oh my goodness. Okay. You can Can they Can they did her act did her action is good or bad? Good. Really good? You sure? All right. Okay, what is her action? What were her action, Kellen? I know. She Kellen, gave, go ahead. Hmm? She gave the food. I know, but how? How would she, she be able to do that? She stole it. Okay, okay, stealing. Stealing, is that a good thing to do or a bad thing to do? Bad thing, bad thing, bad. Well, bad thing, right? But uh, but uh, it's not. She, but she have a good intention or bad intention? Good. Very good, good intention. Yeah, she want to help the homeless. That's good. That's really good intention. But her action, it, it's it's not that good, right? But at least. But anyway, um, uh, well, what about the chair? What about the chair? Uh, Alexandra, Alex. Alex. Okay, what about the chair? The chair is Kai or not Kai? I wasn't here watching the video. Oh, you, you well, what happened when we when I show you the movie? You don't pay attention, Anthony. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, what about the chef? The chef is a good man or bad man? Bad man because um um he only found um the girl who who gave um who stole food and gave the homeless man. He got mad and um gave her a letter. Mm. Okay. All right, Victor. Victor. Why the chip is bad? Why? I came in late, so I couldn't see much of the video. Okay. All right. Thank you for your honesty. That's good. Ariel. Ariel. Okay. Why the chip, why the chip is, is bad, man? Why? Be he wouldn't let the the girl let to give the food the food to the homeless man. No, well, see, well, the reason he get mad to the, the girl is uh, why why she get mad to the girl? But okay, Alan, the chap is a good man or a bad man? Bad. Why bad? Because he, he treat him badly and like he served bad food. No, he treats who badly? Um, the other workers, the other... Okay, that means he treats uh, other workers very badly, right? That's why he... he and also, he um, he makes food. <laughs> it's not that good either. Okay, so... All right. Um, so in here, what else do we learn? Remember? Yes? Uh, Cindy, she um, she have a good in the the girl. She, she have a very good intention. She want to help the homeless before we can, she really care for the homeless, basically. Uh, but you know what? Sometimes when we um, if we use the bad action to uh, to justify our our good uh, 